Hey everybody, uh, this lesson is uh, Perpendicular Lines. This is Module 14.4 in our Integrated Math 2 class. Don't forget, you can find all your lessons at MrMathBlog.com. Okay, so note, uh, so we don't have to keep writing that long word perpendicular. An upside down capital T uh, is, our, is our word, our math symbol for perpendicular. Okay, so what are the key ideas about perpendicular bisectors of a segment? Okay. So here we're going to do a construction. Let me go get my uh, compass. I should have did this earlier here. So it's right down here. Okay, so we are going to construct a perpendicular bisector of a line segment. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is uh, place the point of the compass uh, at point A. So we'll put the pointy part right there. And we are going to, uh, using the compass setting that's greater than half the length, so it has to be opened up more than half the length, so I'm guessing the length half is right there. So make sure it's opened up more than half the length. I like to go, you know, you can go the whole length if you want, but just make sure it's opened up more than half the length of, the, of AB. And draw an arc on top and on bottom, okay? I don't know what color or what pin size I have, but we're going to draw, well, that's pretty good, okay, an arc on top. And then we're going to go and do the same compass opening down here. So I'll make this arc right here. It has to be the same compass opening. Okay, and then I know what we're going to do next. We're going to flip it and put the pointy part over there on. Oops, I did it in pink. That's all right. So without adjusting the compass, we're going to go ahead and place the pointy part over here on B and do the same thing. Okay, so i I, I got to get the compass opening so it's the same as that. So... So right about there, okay. So now we're going to take that over here and we're going to do the same compass opening and do the same thing from this side. So on top and on bottom. So right here and then down here also, okay. You can just keep going and connect them, you guys. You don't have to stop. But anyway, so there we go. And then we're going to pick up our straight edge and we are going to uh, connect those points. So use a straight edge and draw segment CD. Okay, so that segment right there, we've now constructed the perpendicular bisector. So perpendicular means it makes a right angle and it bisected. So the length of AM is going to be congruent to the length of MB. Okay, so we've created a perpendicular bisector of that segment. And that's how we do that. So if we wanted to create a right angle, that's how we do that. Okay. All right. So here we're going to construct a line that passes through some point P that's not on the line. Okay. So we're going to construct a perpendicular from this point. So it goes straight down right here. Okay. So what we do with this is uh, we place the point of the compass up here at um, at P right there, and we draw an arc that intersects two points on AB. So what we got to do is open up our compass so it's opened up. At, um, uh, let's see. Well, yeah, that's pretty good right there. That should work. So it's going to arc on two sides of this line. So it's like a pendulum here. So we just kind of we go and we arc on both sides of the line. So we're interested in where the arc went through there and there. I don't know how big I did my arc on here. I did a much smaller right there. Okay, so there it is from A and B. Okay, let me get that compass setting there. So. Uh, just so I'm consistent with my other stuff that we're doing on here. Okay, so we did that. Now, my students, we don't do constructions in my class, at least right now. I'm sure we will sooner or later, but right now we're not. So we're going to just write constructions and skip it. So I'm sure some of you guys are. Anyway, so from points A and B, we're going to um, uh, make the same size arcs below the line. Okay, so from this point right here, whatever, so I'm going to do it from here and take the same size and do it over here. Okay, and you can probably use the same compass opening I'm going to here, but it just has to be the same from here and here when we make this next arc. So this next arc is going to be right down below. Okay, so here we go. There's an arc, and then I'm going to take that and then move it over there with that same compass opening and make an arc. Now, if your arcs don't intersect, you might have to draw a little bit longer of an arc right there, or um, you don't have them opened up far enough. So probably you should be good right there. Okay, we're going to name that point down there point C. Okay, so there we go. There it is. 
and then we're going to use our straight edge and draw segment PC. So here's segment PC right there. Pick up a straight edge. There it is right there. And then notice um, uh, that PC is now perpendicular to line L. So I should have done a right angle right there. I guess I didn't, but there should be a right angle right there. And it looks like a nice right angle too, okay? So there's no midpoint uh, uh, here. Because it's a line, we don't have midpoints of lines. Lines go on forever and ever and ever. So it's not a bisector, so we don't know that this side equals this side. Um, but if we started with a line segment, then it would be a midpoint. But lines have arrows on them. They go forever and ever and ever. Okay, we just know it's a right angle right there. Okay, so the perpendicular bisector, I think I can close this now. And get this out of the way yeah all right so if a point is on a perpendicular bisector of a segment so we did that in section uh, a or b whatever it was right here so here's a perpendicular bisector right here so if a point lies on this perpendicular bisector right here it's bisecting that segment and it's perpendicular right there let me go back. So um, uh, then it's equidistant from the endpoints of the line segment. Okay. So if there's any point on this perpendicular bisector, because we're bisecting this segment right here, any point is equidistant to the endpoint. So if I pick that point, it's the same distance as it is to there and there. Okay. It's obviously this point is the same distance because it's the midpoint. It's the bisector, but any point on that line, that point right there is equidistant to the endpoints. If I picked another point, point R, equidistant to the endpoints. It's always equidistant to the endpoints right there. Any point on that line, okay? And the converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem is also true. If you, uh, if you have a point that's equidistant from the endpoints, then it has to be on the perpendicular bisector, okay? So if that uh, point R is the same distance away to the two endpoints right there, then imagine a perpendicular bisector going down right through there. That point R is on that perpendicular bisector. Okay, so if AR is congruent to BR, then R lies on that perpendicular bisector of uh, segment AB. Okay, all right, if two uh, intersecting lines form a linear pair with equal measures, then the lines are perpendicular. I know you're thinking, what? Okay, so here's a linear pair. They make up this line right here, line M right here. If these linear pairs, if these angles are congruent, remember the linear pairs are 180 because they make a straight line. So if they're congruent, they both got to be 90 and 90. So if they're 90s, then that means that their right angles are perpendicular. So, so if uh, they're a linear pair and those linear pairs are congruent, then the lines are perpendicular. That's what that says. Okay. Makes sense. Okay. So easy proof is on the bottom of page uh, 968. So we've just been doing proofs. Actually, it's not on yours anymore. Anymore. I forgot. It's like 700 something. It's not 968. That's from a, a different textbook. I should have fixed that. And I don't have my textbook with me. But uh, it's on the bottom of whatever page, uh, close to 700 something, you guys. Okay, so the converse of this is also true. If two lines intersect, uh, if two intersecting lines are perpendicular, then they form equal linear paired angles. So if we know that these angles are right angles, and so is this. That's a right angle and a right angle. If they're linear pairs, they make up a straight line they're perpendicular okay so it says given uh, line B so that's this horizontal right here line B is parallel to line D and also given that line C right here is parallel to line E so parallel lines in the last uh, module we had all these equal angles and supplementary angles also angle 1 is 50 angle 5 where's angle 5 down here is 90 right there find the measures of each angles okay let's mark the parallel lines right there okay there's our parallel lines, and we put the 50s and 90s in there, okay? All right, you guys, what a scene. So angle 2. Angle 2 is right here, you guys. Angle 2 is a corresponding angle with angle 1. Can you see angle 1 sliding right down there on 2? Okay, so corresponding angles are equal to each other. Oh, let's see. I did another thing right there. Okay, well, that's cool. All right, so I did vertical angles right here. Vertical angles are congruent, so 50 and 50. Okay, and then these vertical angles are congruent, 90 and 90 right there. So there's angle 7. Okay, what else? I better follow my order here. Okay, and then corresponding angles are congruent. So that's 50 and that's 50, and this 90 and that's 90 right there. Okay, and then so where's uh, where 3 go? 3's right there. It's a vertical angle, so these vertical angles are congruent. So it was... It was 
minus uh, uh, 50 right there. Straight angles equal 180. So if we have a straight angle, and, and so here's 50 plus blank plus 90, how much more? So I think it's 40 right there. So angles 8 and angle 6 are going to be 40 right there. Is that what I did? Well, I got 8 anyways. 8 is 40, and then 6 and uh, 4 are also 40, okay? 6 and 4 are vertical angles right there. So I think we got everything. All right, you guys, if you are in our class, that's going to be your assignment right there. Take care.